So let's continue with the bit manipulation playlist and strivers A to Z DSA course. But before that, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is divide two integers. Now the catch over here is you cannot use the division operator. So you cannot use it. So you'll be given a dividend, you'll be given a divisor and they will be in the range of integer which is basically minus 2 to the power 31 to uh, 2 to the power 31 minus 1. That's the range and the divisor will never be 0. So you'll be given a dividend, you'll be given a divisor. Now your task is to divide them. So if you divide them, you'll get 7 point something. You'll have to return down the integer value, not the decimal. You can truncate everything after the decimal point and it'll have to return me the integer value. Now, in case, in case, uh, let's assume you are given a dividend, which is something like minus 2 to the power 31 and you're given a divisor, which is something like minus 1. Now, if you go ahead and divide it, what will happen is the value that you'll get is 2 to the power 31 and this one cannot be stored in an integer range because the integer range will only store from minus 2 to the power 31 till 2 to the power 31 minus 1. I've already explained why does it happen in my first lecture. Go back and watch it. So if something like this happens, what you'll be returning is the maximum value which is basically this one integer max integer max is 2 to the power 31 minus 1 that's what you'll be returning and similarly for the negative as well the negative overflows you will be returning integer minimum got it so what will be the first solution that comes to your mind now, the extreme naive solution that i can think of is okay i'm gonna start with three i'm gonna add another three that's six or add another three that's nine another three that's 12 another three that's 15 Another 3 that's 18. Another 3 that's 21. Beyond this I cannot add. So I will keep on adding divisors. Till I can. So the number of divisors that I could add was 7. And that's going to be my answer. Now this will work. If I have to write down the code. It's going to be. Okay. Initially we can start with 0. And a counter 0. Where. I can say value. Instead of value I can say sum. That's a better one here. Sum is 0 and counter is 0. Okay, cool. I'll add once. I'll add the divisor once to the sum. And I'll check if that's not exceeding the dividend. And if that's okay, I can do a counter equal to counter plus 1. That means I'll add it once. And I'll just sum plus equal to the divisor. And I'll keep on doing till I can. And at the end of the day, I can print down the count and that will be that will be it but what will be the time complexity of this one will this work now imagine you are given a divisor as one just imagine you are given a divisor as one in that scenario the time complexity will be big o of dividend right because if you are given a huge number like 2 to the power 31 minus 1 and I given the divisor as 1. Gonna add it on, add it on, add it on. Till 2 to the power 31 minus 1 times. That's a lot of time. And it will be giving you a time limit exceeded. But this is where uh, this solution doesn't work. And the interviewer will ask you to optimize this. So I know one thing. I need 3 into 7. Right. Like I have to uh, multiply the divisor by 7 times. Can I derive something out of it? So that I can do it in a faster way. Maybe yes. Let's see how. Can I write 7 as powers of 2? Like the 7 as powers of 2? Maybe yes. I can write it as 2 to the power 2 which is 4. 2 to the power 1 which is 2. Plus 2 to the power 0. Makes sense. Because this is 4. This is 2 and this is 1. And if you add them up you will get 7. Okay. So that technically means if I just open up the brackets, that's 3 into 2 to the power 2 plus 3 into 2 to the power 1 plus 3 into 2 to the power 0. Now, I know one thing. Every number can be written down in powers of 2, like summation of powers of 2. We know that for sure from bit manipulation. 
Okay. So can I say the first thing that I'll remove from 22 will be not 3, rather 9, sorry, rather 12. 3 into 2 square, that's 12. That is the first thing I'll remove. And then I'll remove 3 into 2, which is 6. And then I'll remove 3 into 1, which is 3. So instead of adding on 1, 1, 1, I'll do the other way. I'll try to remove the bigger number. That's this one. How do I figure this out? It's very simple. What I do is, I knew 7 over here. So I did a bit of reverse engineering. And I did figure this out that we'll have to play in terms of powers of 2. Right. I did a bit of reverse engineering. Now I'll try to do it in the forward engineering. How, how can I do that? It's going to be very simple. I know one thing, from 22, I'll have to remove 3, but in powers of 2s. First power of 2 that I can remove is 3 into 2 to the power 0, which is 3. I can remove it. Maybe I'll try to look to remove a bigger number. That's 3 into 2 to the power 1. That's 6. I can remove 6. I can remove 6. 3 into 2 to the power 2, which is 12. I can remove 12 as well. 3 into 2 to the power 3, which is 8 into 3, 24. I cannot remove 24. So the biggest number that I can remove will be this one. Perfect. So I'll try to remove 12. If I remove 12, the number that I left out, the number that will be left out will be 10. Correct? So I've removed 12. And that was 2 to the power 2. 3 into 2 to the power 2. So just store it somewhere. Which is typically 4. Store it somewhere. Okay. So I'm left out with 10. Can I remove 3 into 2 to the power 0? That's 3 from 10. I can. Can I remove 3 into 2 to the power 1? That's 6. I can. Can I remove 3 into 2 to the power 2? That's 12. I cannot. So typically, I can remove 6. So I'll be removing 6 and, and I'll be left out with 4. How much did I remove? 2 to the power 1. That's typically 2. Perfect. How much am I left out with? 4. Let's try. 3 into the smallest. 2 to the power 0, that's 3. Can I remove 3? I can. 3 into 2 to the power 1, that's 6. Can I remove 6? I cannot. So typically, I can remove 3 from it and I'll be left out with 1. So I've removed 2 to the power 0. That's basically 1. Done. I'm left out with 1, which is lesser than the divisor. Which is lesser than the divisor. So I stop. I put a stop because I cannot remove any further. How many did I remove? How many 3s did I remove? In total, 7. So that's your answer. I did a bit of reverse engineering. Nothing special. So before I move on to the code, there's one more thing that we need to discuss. What if the numbers are negative? Now we are looking for the answer, correct? The answer will only be negative if the numerator is ne uh, positive and the denominator is negative or the numerator is negative and the denominator is positive. Only in these two possible scenarios, the answer when you divide, the answer will come out to be negative. In every other scenario, the answer will be positive. So this is how we can easily address the positive and negative scenario. What we will be doing is, we'll be taking a positive uh, numerator, a positive denominator, and we will divide it. Once we are done with it, we will add a sign to it. Initially, we will not be working with the sign. We will divide it, thinking that both of them are positive. And then we will add the sign depending on these two conditions. That's how I will be approaching this one. So we'll be trying to write down the solution and then we'll be talking about overflows and everything else. But first, let's try to write down the pseudocode. So function, you'll be given a dividend and you'll be given a divisor. So let's uh, get rid of the initial edge case, which is, hey, what if the dividend is equal to equal to the divisor? So in that scenario, please go ahead and return one. So that is the basic scenario. Now, if I ask you, hey, what about the sign? Let's assume initially the sign is true. True means True over here means it's a positive. I know one thing, it will only be negative if 
the dividend is greater than zero which is a positive number and the divisor is lesser than zero in this scenario the sign will be false and the other scenario can be if the dividend is lesser than zero and the divisor is greater than zero in that scenario the sign will be false false over here means a negative okay so I've dealt with the sign thing right now what is the next thing i need to make sure that both of these numbers are positive so we are done with the sign thing now what is the next thing we will be operating with positive numbers so let's take the absolute of dividend and store it in a variable known as n and let's take the absolute of divisor and store it in a variable d. Let's assume the initial is 22 and d is 3. What were we doing? We were checking 3 into 2 to the power 0 which is 3. I'm very sure this is possible. Right? This is possible. And then this one. I'm very sure this is also possible. I'll keep on doing it and we figured out that 12 was the first number was the last number till which it was possible. Then we removed 12 and we were left out with 10. And then again we started for checking for which 3 was it possible. So first we do with 22, then with 10. So we were doing multiple iterations. Thereby I can say, okay, I will be doing the iteration till I know the denominator is lesser than equal to numerator. That means I can still remove perfect. I'm very sure that counter 0. Now what do I mean by counter 0? 3 into 2 to the power 0. This 0. I can remove this one. I'm very sure. I need to check. Can I remove the next one? Why am I sure? Because if I'm checking for this one. That automatically proves it. Okay. Let's check for the next one. Till how much can I remove? I'm like okay. Numerator greater than equal to. I know the denominator is 3. Into 2 to the power, counter plus 1. Let's check for the next one. That's what I'll write. That's what I'll write, isn't it? Because if counter is 0, I'll check for the next one. Can it? Can it remove? And if it can, maybe I'll do a counter plus plus. Maybe I'll do a counter plus plus. Makes sense, right? I'll be checking for 3 into 2 to the power 1. Then 3 into 2 to the power 2. And that's the max it can do. Because when counter reaches 2 and it checks for 2 to the power 3, it cannot because this will be 24 and hence this condition will be false. Okay, done. Can I just rewrite this as D left shift of counter plus 1? I can because this is equivalent to writing D into 2 to the power counter plus 1. Simple bit manipulation. Simple bit manipulation. When you do a left shift operator with some value, that goes to the power of 2. Perfect. So I know this much can be removed. So thereby, can I say my answer, maybe you can take an answer as 0 and you can say, okay, answer plus equal to 2 to the power count because that many 3s can be removed. If you remember, initially we could remove 3 into 2 to the power 2 which was 12. So you added 4 to your answer. So I've added 4 to my answer. Again, 2 to the power count can be written as one left shift of count because this is nothing but 2 to the power count in bit. Okay, done. Now what is the next thing? I need to take it out of the number as well. Numerator minus. How much will I take? 3 into, so that's division, into 1 left shift of count because that's, that is the number that I'll be taking out. That's the number. D into 2 to the power initially 3 into 2 to the power 2 is what I'll be taking off okay. and again after this iteration I'll again come over here where n will be 10 and d will still be 3 and I'll again find out what's the minimal power of 2 that I can remove I'll keep going so once the division is completed this answer will be storing your answer and if you remember there were some conditions so you can just keep a check because we know the answer will always be positive if the answer goes beyond 2 to the power 31 because this cannot be stored. The maximum an integer can store is this one. Thereby, if it goes beyond this and and the sign is positive, which is true, 
you will be returning an integer max. That's what you will be returning. And you can have one more condition where the sign is negative and the answer is exceeding 2 to the power 31. In this scenario, you will be returning integer min. Done. And if both of the scenarios do not match, you have a valid answer. And if you have a valid answer, please return according to the sign. If the sign is positive, you return the answer or else or else you can return minus 1 into the answer because it will be adding the minus sign and the function ends. So this is how you can easily do it. So it's time to discuss the time complexity of the section of the code that we have written. We have an outer while loop. We have an inner while loop. So we know something into something will be the time complexity. First of all, this is getting reduced like 22, 10 and then so on. And what are we reducing? 22, we wrote it as 3 into 7 and the 7 was 4 plus 2 plus 1. That's a logarithmic representation of 7, like in powers of 2. So I'm very sure this one is running for logarithmic base 2n because I'm reducing it in powers of 2s. Okay. And then this while loop is being run to figure out the largest 3, the largest uh, power of 2, which is multiplied with this 3 that can be removed. Correct. And again, it starts from 1, 2, 3 and the maximum it will go is still 31. Because 2 to the power 31 is like a huge number. That's the maximum I can do. So again, this is going in terms of logarithmic calculations. Okay. So can I say the overall time complexity will be logarithmic base 2n into logarithmic base 2n, which is logarithmic base 2n square. And the space complexity will be big of 1. Again, one thing, this is not an exact time complexity. Depending on the dividend, depending on the devices, it might, it might be very small as well. Okay. So this is something like an approximate measurement of the time complexity. So before I wrap up this video, let's talk about the overflows and the small note which is added in the lead code problem statement. Assume we are dealing with an environment that could only store integers within 32-bit integer range. And if you look at my code, I'm using long. Before I move on uh, to the explanation, why am I using long? When it is clearly stated that we are dealing with an environment that could only store 32-bit. This is lead code number 29, which means this problem was set probably five, six, seven years down the line. And they didn't think about it or they didn't modify it. Why do I say this? If I take the dividend to be minus 2 to the power 31, and there is a line where I'm writing equal to absolute. So when you do an absolute of minus 2 to the power 31, you will get 2 to the power 31. And this cannot be stored in an integer because integer can only store this much. So either you write a bunch of if else, bunch of if else. And that will make the code clumsier or you have other option of using long and I'll prefer using a data type which is there in the system. Please explain this to the interviewer if he is asking. He will not ask in most of the cases because, because uh, when they give you this problem what they're looking for is your understanding of break because if they're giving you this problem they're not looking for overflow scenarios. What they're looking for is can you break 7 down into powers of twos and then can you solve it? That's what they're looking for. So that will be it for this one. So if you're still now watching and if you've understood everything, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's play in some other videos and then do right here. Yeah. Whenever your heart is broken, don't ever forget your golden.